Today, I'm going to show you two different things. So we're going to apply the PRP all the way through the scalp, and then I'm going to do the PBO thread process uh, in the crown area, so you can see that. Um, the areas that are severely depleted, we don't expect to see some massive regrowth from these treatments and procedures, but what we want to do is to protect the weaker hairs, especially in and through this area, the mid-scalp is very, very thin and weak and wispy hair. We want to get some uh, rejuvenation of that zone. Um, use the, we use the Regen Labs. We thank Regen for providing the kit today um, to prepare the PRP. I see it on my Coulter counter, but we know it's probably going to be about one and a half to three, uh, or one and a half to two and a half times concentrate. So we've got this about uh, seven cc's of PRP, and I'm going to start from the front and I'll work my way back into the crown. Typically, my process is to do um, 0.1. Uh, cc's in each injected area and about one centimeter apart, but it really just depends on how much elasticity there is of the scalp. So, of course, Rich, let me know if you're feeling anything. He's smiling and happy. And <coughs> if you'll see my technique, you'll see I'm going about a half to a centimeter apart in each of these different zones. I'm going to start all, working all the way around the frontal hairline first. And I'm just doing a small uh, very, very tiny injection. This is a 27 half, half inch needle. Um, some people have remarked over the years that they need to use smaller syringes in order to push the PRP. I guess I have a strong thumb after doing a couple thousand of these over the past 10 years. So if you're doing this at home <laughs> from YouTube, you can do it at home, right? You know, it's a, either you've seen a DIY. But uh, if you're doing this in your office, you may want to split the PRP up into smaller. Um, smaller areas, the smaller uh, syringes so that you can easily push the PRP into the scalp. And as your thumb gets stronger, you can then switch over to a larger, uh, a larger syringe. So I'm moving quite quickly, but I guess what I would like to show you is the technique that goes very, very superficially. That's where the follicles in the dermis. So we want to keep our PRP in the dermis. We don't want to go too deep. We don't need the PRP down in the adipose layer, and we don't want to create too much of a bleb, but it's really, you can feel it in the dermis as you go along, and I often do that. I'll follow with my finger and feel, feel for the PRP as we go, and that will help me not only in looking, seeing how I'm injecting, but also seeing exactly where I've missed, and I'm feeling as I go, so I'm looking at different areas. I can kind of feel, okay, it's a little bit shy up in there, and I'll add a little bit more. If this is in general, in women, the skin is a little bit more forgiving. It re you can actually spread out your injections. In some men, you find that the skin is very, very tight. You have to kind of go closer together. And so, um, just to give you an example, 700 square centimeters, maybe about the size of my hand, all through this area, is kind of what I'm aiming for today. I'm happy to answer some questions along the way. Was that just uh, one spin with the centrifuge and? drawn off, and is that adequate? So, is it adequate? Yes, it's a single spin, buffy coat, uh, test tube based, as uh, you saw in my presentation. Um, you know, you really should choose your kit based on what you're trying to create. So, in my presentation, I said, I like to have a high concentration of platelets, so if I had my preference, I would use a dual spin process and try to get somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1.4 to 1.5 million platelets. So it's worth doing if you don't hit, if you're not, if we haven't adapted your technique. Well, Just I don't know. <laughs> Everybody has to make their own decisions. I mean, what you should do is, uh, many people, and we, we used our single spin process for many years, and we got nice results. Maybe it was from extracellular matrix like A-cell in conjunction with it. Um, we don't really know. So the PRP is in place. The last and final step is to microneedle. Can you talk about the ring block? Yes, so as I said, it's a septicane block. Yeah. Um, septicane plus, it is 2% septicane plus the uh, 100,000 epi. And in order to create a ring block, 
on the scalp, what you should do is make a little bleb and then use that numb area and work your way around nice and easy. You can use a vibration tool to distract the skin. You can use the Pronox, the nitrous. In general, um, it's very, very comfortable when you combine these techniques and distract the skin using the gate theory. So I'm using today Miamed, it's my favorite uh, microneedle, it's a corded device. It's got a very, very special cartridge. It has a, um, it's very smooth when it's operating, it doesn't make a lot of noise, there's not a lot of vibration in the handpiece. It's got a totally hermetically sealed uh, um, cartridge, so it doesn't get anywhere near, there's no fluids that are going to get anywhere near the mechanism. And also there's a plate inside the cartridge that enables the, the needles to work as a shock absorber all the way through. So it doesn't catch on the hair, which is really, really nice. So if we're doing um, rollers, for example, on the scalp, if there's any kind of hair, it's going to get caught and you know, it's, going to, it's going to catch you. If you. I find that if you're using a battery-powered or non-corded device, sometimes they just don't have enough power. This one makes 900 punctures per second. What's your depth? What's the depth? The depth is, okay, that's a great point. So you can look at the depth and adjust it. I like it to be at 1.5 millimeters. Yeah. So there we go. So we've done micro medium all the way through. Um, you don't need to, you're not like resurfacing the scalp here. So just a simple pass. You can see the skin is a little bit pink. And that's exactly what we want. If you have some of your PPP, platelet 4 plasma left, you can use that as a lubricant as you go all the way through. Um, I use the opportunity to kind of make sure that there's no big blebs of PRP. You can see I'm just kind of running my finger around all the different areas that I've injected. So that, that's basically the PRP step. We would typically uh, rinse them off and laser after that. Today we're going to also do our uh, PDO thread process. So hopefully we have enough time to show you that. These are PDO threads or master threads. And uh, afterwards, if you'd like to come up and take a peek at it, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, just do a couple. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, Do Dr. We're going to do one side of your scalp. We'll have to do the rest uh, at some point later. So a little bit of tension on the scalp uh, enables us to place the PDO threads all into position. So I suggest you leave the uh, the guides in place as you go. Do you always use PRP when you do PDO? No, actually, the results that I showed in the um, in the in the presentation today was PDO only, no PRP. But you can, you can combine it, why not? So you use it smooth? These are smooth, uh, 30. Uh, 28. 28 millimeter. So we're going to do half of the scale. That would be pretty interesting, right? <laughs> 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 well. Study time. <laughs> How deep are you going with the threads? So the, the threads are um, just in the dermis, very, very superficial. And you'll feel it. You, pump, you use your one hand to create a little bit of tension, puncture right in, and you want to go very, very superficially. It slides right in the right depth. So once the threads are all in, and usually I would put um, radially into the crown area like this, maybe 40 threads. I would make another little circle on the inside, perhaps overlapping. I would go all the way around. And then before you're done, once all the threads are in, you can like look at it, make sure there's all the areas are um, treated that you want. You make a little, you spin the thread, the, the holders for the threads, I guess, or the handles, and then off you go. Once you spin them, the needles come out nice and easy, leaving the thread in place. Have you ever seen uh, a negative reaction to that? I have not. In the literature, there's not much. I mean, obviously, you're looking for uh, granulomas, things like that. We've never seen that. Sometimes the thread will extrude. That's okay. You're putting in dozens of them. They may feel like a little stubble of the thread. You just tell the patient to pull it out. Not a big deal. Some of the patients like to save them, bring them in to show you. Show them <laughs> tell it. Anyway, so that's the whole thing. Just remove the, remove the needles, and that's it. And, uh, and you follow them up. I recommend 90-day intervals for, uh, for measurements and microphotography to track your progress over time. Fantastic, thank you.